Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the first video, which is going to be a series on how you can secure your Synology NAS. Now, I have a bunch of different videos, and what I found is that they're all kind of scattered. So you might find exactly what you're looking for in one video, and you might find some you know, little tidbit in another. But if you try and follow it sequentially, it's very difficult because you have to try and kind of match them up. So the goal of this series is gonna try and be to give you step-by-step -step instructions on things that you can do to strengthen the security of your Synology NAS. Now, security is touchy because it's kind of a moving target. The things that you do today won't necessarily protect you from things in six months from today. So these are kind of best practices. And if you followed or watched any of my prior videos, they might be redundant in the sense of things that you've already done. So I apologize in advance for that, but they are things that you can check to ensure that they're implemented the correct way. So my final disclaimer, once again, is that this will not necessarily protect you from all security related incidents, but they are best practices that you can follow. Now in this video in specific, we're gonna look at user permissions. And I wanted to kind of start off with this because for the majority of people, one of the easiest things that you can do is give your users access to everything. And by everything, I mean all of your applications, all of your shared folders, et cetera. And that's kind of a blanket approach to ensure that they have access to everything that they need. However, in an enterprise environment, that is the worst way and that's something that's never followed. What you're generally doing is following a least permissive approach. So what that means is that you're gonna give your users the least amount of permissions that you possibly can to accomplish the task that they're trying to do. Now, how that relates to your Synology NAS is periodically, you're gonna to wanna to run through and ensure that the users that you currently have have access to the things that they need, meaning there are situations where you might give a specific user access to a shared folder, and you know it just kind of stuck there, and they don't need access to that shared folder anymore, but they still have it. So periodically, it's a good idea to run through a permission audit report. And what that involves is you going through, as an administrator, the user accounts on your NAS, what they have access to, and then remove any permissions that they may no longer need. Now, if you're setting up your NAS or if you just set up your NAS, you wanna follow that least permissive model from the start. So what that means is ensure that you're only giving your users access to things that they need access to. So the approach that I follow is I will open up every single one of my users. And if this is an enterprise environment where you have hundreds of users, this is a pain and it's more of an undertaking for the entire organization that you're working with rather than just yourself. But as soon as I open up one of those users, the first thing that I do is check to see what user groups they're part of and ensure that they still need access to that. So keep in mind that user permissions are managed on a user level and a group level. So if a user is part of a group and you're not explicitly stopping that user from having access to a system, they're gonna have access to that if the group has access. So to reiterate that, if the user is not explicitly denied permission, either through a group or through their individual user account, and they're part of a group that has permission to that resource, they will have permission to it. So it works both ways. Either the user account has to have permission to it, or the group has to have permission to it, or the user account or the group has to explicitly deny access. It's slightly confusing, but you have to keep that in mind. Now keep in mind that user groups are part of this annual audit as well. I normally do that towards the end, and the reason for that is because my user groups in my production environment generally match up based on whatever they have access to. For example, I'll create a user group for a specific shared folder, and that user group only gives access to that shared folder. So my groups generally have to be audited less. The users in that group have to be audited more, but I'm managing that by checking on the individual user as well. So keep in mind that the order doesn't matter. If you wanna audit your user groups first, that's fine. Or if you wanna audit them second, that's fine as well. So after I check out the user groups and I ensure that the user that I'm looking at is supposed to be having permission to those groups, I'll move on to the permissions at that point. And the permissions, the way that I normally manage my permissions is that I actually generally keep the permissions unchecked here for everything. And the reason I do it is because I manage everything on a group level. So rather than going in and individually giving users permission to specific shared folders, 
what I'll do is I'll make sure that they have no permission here. And that's basically informing the system to go through and check what user groups the user's part of and what permissions the user has through that user group and granting permission that way. Now I acknowledge that if you're a home user and you have one or two users, that is major overkill. Um, and honestly, then this process for you should be relatively straightforward because you'll just go through, check to see what permissions the user will have access to, and then you can grant or deny based on that. But for me, that's how I normally do it. So the key when you're leaving this section is that you should have your user permissions set up the way that you want them to be, or you should be managing it on the group level. But you're going to really want to keep an eye on that preview section. The preview section is going to let you know if the user does or does not have access to this specific folder. When I'm comfortable with the shared folder permissions, I move on to the application section. And the explanation for this is pretty simple because it's the exact same as it is for shared folders. So you're either going to come in here and you're going to manage it directly, meaning that you're going to grant access to specific applications on the user level or on the group level. Once again, you're going to want to check out that preview section because that preview section is going to tell you exactly what this user does and does not have access to. Now, keep in mind that these are for applications. So if the user, for example, has access to Active Backup for Business and they try and log into the Active Backup for Business portal, they're going to be allowed to access it. If it's denied, if they try and log in with their user account, they're going to get an error not allowing them to access it. Pretty straightforward, but very powerful because you can manage permissions for every single application that exists on your NAS. Now I'll do that for every single user that I have on my NAS. And as soon as I'm done, I then head over to the group section. And the group section is the exact same. You're going to want to run through the shared folder permissions. You're going to want to ensure that the groups that you have created have access to the things that they're supposed to and has no access to some of the other things. And when I say no access, I mean that it's just completely unchecked. The reason I'm saying that is because for shared folders, what you're going to see at the bottom here is it says the permission is dictated by user and group permissions, permission priority, NA, which is no access, read write, and read only. So if you come in here and you specify that they should have no access to everything, that will supersede everything and they will not have access to anything at that point. So generally what I do is I either give them permission to these shared folders or it stays unchecked, which means that since they explicitly don't have permission to it, meaning that they do not have read write or read only permission, they will not have permission to access that resource. It's kind of a different way of doing it as opposed to explicitly giving no access. The exception to this is if you explicitly want to say that a specific user should not have access to something, you can go to that user account and explicitly deny access. Finally, in the application section, you can go through here and grant or deny access to certain applications. This functions the same though as the shared folders, which means that if you deny access, even if you go ahead and grant access through a different user group or the individual user account, it will deny access for them as it supersedes the approval permission. So in next week's video, we are going to go through and we're going to look at how you can change the default settings for some of these applications. But you can come in here and either grant or deny access to applications on the user group as well. So the final thing that I want to touch on is that you can give permissions on individual files as well or folders. And what you have to do is stop inheriting permissions and then you can individually grant permissions on that individual file or folder. The reason I generally stay away from this is because it ends up being a management nightmare. At this point, you can imagine if you're coming in here periodically to do reviews like this, you're not going to be able to possibly manage all of these shared folders if individual files and folders have unique permissions. So generally, I shy away from that. While you can do it, I would suggest that you don't do it. But that's just a individual best practice. I'm sure there are people out there who will have specific reasons why they have to do that. Just understand at that point, you're going to have to go through and manage that if you want to, if you really want to know what users have access to what things, you'll have to audit that as well. So overall, for this first episode, that's really what I wanted to hit. I wanted to hit user and group permissions. So keep in mind that while you might not view that as a way of securing your Synology NAS, the things that your users have access to are arguably the easiest ways 
to you know potentially run into issues. So if a user account is compromised for whatever reason and they have access to all of your shared folders, it's gonna be a lot easier for an attacker to access those files or that application because they have access to it. And in the second video, we're gonna take a look at how you can increase some of the security on some of those user accounts. But I want you to keep in mind that you should always understand what those user accounts have access to, at least from an administration point of view. So like I said earlier, this is the first video of a few videos in this series where we're gonna take a look sequentially at how you can secure your Synology NAS. I'm hoping that this helped explain some of the permission structure and why you should probably periodically check on some of these user permissions. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos in this series, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.